Hello everyone and welcome to the Anime Zillia and to another episode of Anime Left Out, a series in where we look at some of the content that the anime left out of the manga series. And we see, you know, just how it could have affected the story or our views as the audience on a specific event or a character. And this time we'll be looking over a very big piece of character development for the character of Rizu Ogata from the We Never Learn anime series or franchise. Now, for me personally, this piece of development was what got me interested into Rizu's character. Up to this point in the manga, and throughout the entirety of the anime, I didn't care much about Rizu's character. Um, and honestly, this missed out bit of content not only develops Rizu's character, but gives us more of an understanding as to why she wants to be good at games, and also, it's on some level, relatable to us as the viewers, as it tackles some real life struggles, that maybe one or two of us have pretty much gone through. So, for this, I'll be covering the chapters of uh, 114 to 117 in this video. So if you haven't read those yet, and you're not up to date, then why not go read them, then come back and see what I've got to say about it. See if your thoughts are matching mine. Now, basically in the anime, it's very obvious that this doesn't actually get shown or hinted at. And what these chapters actually do is that they give us a different side to Riju's character as we learn more about her character's history and her relationships with her grandmother and Fumino. Or, as she likes to call her grandmother, Nana. However, in Riju's mind, her Nana hates her. And this is clearly not the case, as a nana who hates her granddaughter shouldn't exist, and if it does, and if this was the case, then why would she go through the effort, year after year, making her gifts and board games? Like, if this doesn't scream out that a nan loves you and wants you to succeed in life, then I don't know what does. But wait, why did she make all the board games? That's the interesting question that you need to kind of delve deeper into the chapters um, while reading them to kind of understand and that's what I'm going to be going through uh, in this video. So, let's quickly dispel the illusion, shall we? Uh, so Anana made these board games to help Rizu make friends as she knew that she wouldn't be around uh, for young Rizu forever basically. Her Nana knew that she was getting old and um, she just wants her to. She just wants young Rizu to play with kids her own age once in a while. And you know, while they were walking, she saw some kids talking about having a new game. And this kind of gave her the idea, like, hmm, maybe if I make Rizu a new game, maybe she could share it with some kids her age and make some new friends. And you know what? This is a such a kind ge uh, gesture that you know. It's kind of sad that it does get misinterpreted. And the phrase um, that her nana uses, which is, come back when you're strong enough to beat me. And when she turns around and like has a conversation of, why do you hate me, nana? Yeah, uh, do you hate me, nana? Yeah, that's right. I don't care about you more either. Obviously, this isn't true in the slightest. In fact, it's probably pained her to say that to her granddaughter. The only reason why she did it, what she did, was to basically force Rizu to go find other kids to play with and to make some friends. That's the whole purpose of these board games and outfits, is to help Rizu give her that push to go out into the world and to kind of make friends herself so that she doesn't have to rely on her grandmother all the time. Now, what does this actually have to do with Rizu's development? Well, um, hmm. Well, if we look at the impact that this breakup between grandmother and granddaughter could, uh, relationship could have, um, well, it could kind of help us see some of the lists and some of the reasons as to why Rizu despises herself. Because she generally does despise herself, and she sees only bad things in herself at the moment. And that's not a good thing to have. Now, 
There's also another thing that Rizu's also really worried about, and it comes up in this chapter, and it just adds to her development as well. Is the fact is that she says that she doesn't want anyone to see the awful person that she is anymore. And she's certain that everyone will come to hate her if they stay with her long enough, just like her grandmother did. So this is evident to the fact that she does not understand her grandmother's feelings or her wishes. Because in Rizu's eyes, her grandmother still hated her when she passed away. And she got bored of her. And that's kind of bad for Rita's mentality. And if you're living with that kind of understanding and that kind of feeling, then of course you're not going to dis- uh, you're not going to like yourself very much. If the one person you cared about and had so much fun with when you were younger turns out that they hated you and that they didn't like spending time with you, that's going to knock your confidence. And there's one thing that this chapter kind of, or this book, group of chapters, kind of wants Rizu to do is understand her grandmother's feelings and to get some friends and to understand that's what it was and to boost her own confidence. Because liking yourself comes with your own confidence in your own abilities and your own self. It's something that I'm not going to get too into but I personally have struggled with and reading this chapter did kind of hit me hard and not seeing this in the anime because this is a really nice beautiful thing. Uh, like, piece of development for Rizu's character. It was actually quite upsetting not seeing it, if I'm honest. But anyway, moving back into the actual phrasing of it. So, Rizu's one, uh, you know, she doesn't understand, she doesn't know the true intentions. And if you add in the fact that Rizu also just wants to be like Furuhashi, then that, again, adds to the whole disliking yourself if you're constantly trying to be someone else instead of trying to be who you are, then you're never going to be happy with yourself when you reach or when you, you know, have something come good. And uh, I think that's something very important that the chapter uh, chapters actually get across um, with the fact that Furuhashi and Yuiga help Rizu to actually understand this and to kind of push her forward. Now... We've already seen... Now, like I said, we haven't actually seen any of this hinted at in the anime series whatsoever. And you're probably thinking, hold on a minute, Develop must, development for this character must end with Rizu liking herself. And yes, it actually does. Oh, I disappeared. And yes, it does actually end with her liking herself. And that's thanks to, um, you know... Uh, Yuiga and Furuhashi, they help her understand. Yuiga sets her a test, and in that test, it basically flushes out the fact that Furuhashi actually wanted to be like Rizu herself because of Rizu's ability to understand, uh, stand up for herself and to express herself freely. So by kind of saying, look, the person you admired and wanting to become wanted to be like you because you have this great trait and personality that they don't have. So you should like yourself for that. And that's brilliant. And as well as the fact is, the chapters do end with Rizu understanding slightly Hanana's feelings. And that, again, was actually really nice to see as well. And it's all thanks as well to Rizu's friends arriving, wanting to play the games with her, the Hanana, basically her treasures, as she calls them, because she hasn't shown them to anybody other than um, Yuiga and Rizu, uh, Furuhashi. So having her whole friends play that, play those games with her, and then seeing the kind of uh, astral image of her nana looking back at her and smiling, God, that made me smile. And again, it's such a shame that we didn't see this in anime format. So in conclusion, this skip content could have given Rizu a boost in person uh, popularity, as it would add more dimension to her character and more uh, development and possibly be relatable to some of viewers that are watching this. Um, and it's also the first time that we see Rizu be a bit cheeky towards Yuiga as well. And I think they kind of hinted that at the anime towards the end, that Rizu was a bit more bold, a bit more brazen. But in the manga, that's actually in much more effect, and it comes in after this, uh, but it kind of creeps in during this, if that makes sense. So we do see that 
development as well, which is also a nice bit of brush of fresh air, a nice brush of fresh air to see. So let me know what you think. Should this have been animated? Um, and uh, would you have liked to have seen it animated? Please remember to support the official release. I'll link where you can read the latest chapters down in the description below. Um, like the video if you like the video. Subscribe if you're new for more anime content. Um, and if you like We Never Learn as well. Other than that, comment all your thoughts down below. Hope you have an amazing day and I'll catch you then. Bye.